the Nigerian in me was just like, why were you not saying it from the beginning? Akwaba, Akwaba to my channel, Medin the Adeze. My name is Adeze, but you can also call me Abna because I was born on Tuesday and I lived in Ghana for about five years. So I don't know if I can get more Ghanaian than that. <laughs> I schooled in Ghana, actually. That's how come I was in Ghana for that long. Um, you guys showed me so much love in my previous video where I talked about my life as an international student in Ghana. Guys, <laughs> you guys are amazing. Like, you guys are as amazing as I remember you guys being. And um, if you're a Nigerian that watched that video, thank you so much for the love that you showed me. If you were from any other country on the planet Earth, Thank you so much for the love. If you're Ghanaian though, thank you. You guys literally flooded my comment section with love. I'm just so grateful. Medase. Medase, why? <laughs> I, I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you. In today's video, I'm going to be responding to a comment. Somebody asked me to make a video about my first impressions uh, or like culture shock as an international student in Ghana. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys my culture shock. Um, what are the things that I found different from Nigeria as an international student in Ghana? Bear in mind that the culture shocks are not necessarily bad things, they're just things that were different, you know? So let's get right into this video. By the way, I don't know if I'm going to be talking about Ghanaian Jollof and Nigerian Jollof and what I think, but maybe I will. So you want to keep watching to kind of see what I think about that argument. <laughs> so the first thing that I found um, to be a culture shock was the language. Um, I was in Accra. I schooled in, in the University of Ghana, Ligon, so it was in Accra, Ligon, and I, I thought that it was different and interesting, the fact that everybody in Accra, or maybe everybody and their mother and their children, were able to speak tree, and it was like the one language that unified everybody, just like in Nigeria, like one thing that unifies most people is english and even the english self not everybody can speak it like there are parts of nigeria that you go to and people cannot speak english um just like any other part of the world because it's not our mother tongue it's not our first language but in ghana like everybody could connect on the tree level like if you can speak tree in ghana especially accra like you would definitely be able to communicate to another person in tree and i thought that that was interesting that's my first second one <laughs> this one has a lot of things in it but it's the gentle and peaceful nature of ghanaians i already said it before but honestly I have to say it again, but because it's a different video, I'm able to give more examples, okay? So the first example is that if you're in a shuttle, by shuttle I mean a bus, a mulwe, whatever you may call it, if you're supposed to alight at, like, let's say the name of the bus stop is Legon Bus Stop, like, all you need to say when you're approaching Legon Bus Stop is just say, bus stop. Like, you don't even need to start announcing from the beginning of your trip that you're going to alight at Legon bus stop. Like, when Legon bus stop is like the next bus stop, you just need to say, mate, bus stop. Like, you need to just say bus stop. And they will drop you at Legon bus stop. Where I'm coming from, okay, I'm a Niger like me. I'm used to, like, if I enter a bus, best believe that I'm going to be saying, we, we say Owa. We don't say bus stop. So, if Owa is Yoruba term. And this is probably applicable to people that live in lagos truly because if you live in other parts of nigeria you might have different ways that you tell the bus driver that you're alighting but in lagos we say owa so if i'm going to drop <laughs> in oshodi from the beginning i better be saying it oshodi owa oshodi owa when you're alight when you're arriving oshodi and you know oshodi is the next bus stop oh wow oshodi oh wow in fact like, you could still get Oshodi, and they will not drop you off at Oshodi. Like, the driver will keep moving, and you'll be shouting, Owa! I've been saying Owa since. <laughs> so, like, when I got to Ghana, and then, first of all, like, the first time I was supposed to go to Makola with my friend, that was the first time I entered Chocho. A Chocho is what they call the shuttle. I entered Chocho. And, like, my friend was like, oh, mate, Makola, bus stop. And I was just like, bus stop like why you say bus stop like why and my my friend's like oh that's how you let the driver know and i'm like so calmly are you sure he heard you are you sure he would drop you like i had so many questions <laughs> the nigerian in me was just like why were you not saying it from the beginning <laughs> you screwed up 
<laughs> oh, thing that was like a shocker for me. Oh, the next thing that was like a shocker for me. I don't even know if this one really qualifies as like culture shock, but it's the fact that the chickens in Ghana are too fat. Like <laughs> when we're eating, like in fact, when when there's a plate of food, you see the chicken. The size of the chicken is so big. And I'm just like, why? And it used to make me feel very uncomfortable because in Nigeria, we call chicken like that horrible. And we are made to believe that those kinds of chicken like did not like fit, like did not grow naturally. Like they're like a Greek, like they made them grow, grow big, which might be true or might not be true. But I took that mentality to Ghana. So every time I saw a really big fat chicken, I'm just like, why is it so big? <laughs> and for me, that was like a culture shocker because it's like, this is like the, their way of life. This is what they eat. This is the chicken that they know to be chicken. And for me, I'm coming from a place where chicken is typically like smaller in size. And so seeing the chicken lap be so big for me was just like, Ugh. also, I found it weird that Ghanaians eat almost everything with shit. So like, I believe that a Ghanaian can eat anything with shit. So in fact, come for me, but I think you guys can drink tea with shit. So like, that's how much you guys love shit. So and coming from Nigeria, where like, we didn't like we don't even have shit though like so you can imagine how i like, come into a country where people are literally eating everything with shit though i like shit though so it wasn't even a problem like oh yeah in ghana they eat more sausages than in nigeria like i think in a nigerian home you probably find people eating sausage maybe when you're when they're having shawarma or when they're like making breakfast or something but in ghana like they eat sausage with like pasta you guys eat sausage with like rice you guys have a lot of sausage kebab which bangs by the way i love sausage kebab with bread so i'm not even mad at it <laughs> i'm not even mad at all but it was definitely a different thing for me coming from a country where like i've never i before i came to ghana i had never seen kebab sausage before like I'd never seen sausage made into kebab before. So imagine my shock, like coming into Ghana and seeing that. Oh, so that was definitely different for me. Like, I'm like, why, why is there so many sausages in this country? And why are they so big? <laughs> why? Oh, the next one. As an international student, right? So in Nigeria, like before getting into university, you'd hear things like, oh, like cultists and fraternities in Nigerian universities were like more aggressive. Um, so in my university, Legon, they call them Vandals. And I think they have names for like different universities, but in mine it was Vandals, right? And the Vandals were not aggressive. Like I heard that if, I mean, their color is red, they wear red. And I heard that if you wear red and you pass by your hostel, they're gonna like insult you and make you take it off or whatever. I just never wore red around there. I never knew anybody that wore red, so it wasn't a problem. However, they never were really, like, they like they did better in school. Like I heard that when it was time to study, they studied really hard and it was almost prestigious. Like you openly say that you're a vandal and it was a cool thing, I guess. But the weird thing for me as a Nigerian was that whenever they did their charging, they call it charging, which is like when, I guess when they're trying to inaugurate a new leader or something, they would literally walk around campus stack naked. Do you understand what I mean? Like when I say stack naked, they're not putting on anything. That was weird. <laughs> I've never seen anything like that. I've never heard anything like that happening in a Nigerian university. So I definitely thought that that was different. Very, very invasive, if I'd say, and weird. <laughs> like when, when you hear that vandals are charging, like people just trying to avoid being around there or like, but they, they wouldn't, like when they're doing that, they don't disturb anybody. I mean, apart from the visual, disturbance i guess <laughs> but they wouldn't like attack you or like speak to you they just like dance around charge like they sing songs they dance some of them put on mask but they're naked you know like i mean i even up to now i still don't understand why they have to be naked while doing that so if you have an explanation please feel free to leave it in the comment section the next point is that the um Ubers in Ghana make more use of picantos. Picantos are like smaller cars. And so it's like if you're like four friends and you're probably going to the airport and you have a, a bag, like you're not necessarily able to like fit into one car and put in, unlike Nigeria where people use more like Toyota Corollas, um, Toyota Camrys 
for like ubers in ghana it's like pay councils i don't know why that was i think somebody said something like the government gave more people pay councils to like do uber with but i just thought it was really small it might be different now because again i graduated a while ago so it might be different now i don't know let me know are they still making use of pecantos now like is it different in the comment section i'm interested in knowing what that is like now i don't know let me know if things have changed finally i just want to say that nigerians and Ghanaians are very similar people like when i was in ghana like people would even like it if if i didn't speak maybe if you didn't hear like a nigerian accent or something like people would literally think that i am i'm Ghanaian. um and then also when i see some Ghanaians in nigeria like i think that they're nigerians before they tell me that they're, they're actually Ghanaians. um we have the same like we have very similar cultures you know like even some of our languages i think it's airway and yoruba sounds very much alike and by history we were told that we had like the same ancestors and hence the similarity in language and even in the words like some of the words in Ewe language and, and Yoruba language are very similar um so that that one we have the same culture with like even food like a lot of our foods are similar like we have okra the first time I, I tried kontomiri like it was literally like a goosey soup and I was just like oh this is like goosey soap it's just different kinds of leaves we don't have contemporary in nigeria we do more pumpkin leaves in nigeria i guess there's no pumpkin leaf in ghana so we do more contemporary in ghana but um similar we have a um, red red which is beans but jollof rice i'm not going to talk about that i just not i'm just not but feel free to talk about it don't be fighting in my comment section though <laughs> but feel free to talk about the Ghanaian jollof and Nigerian jollof. I see if you want to argue, go to Senegal. Because I heard that they are even our bosses. Like, they are up there and we are here fighting when people are up there. So, yeah, that's just where I wanted to leave that at. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As usual, making my, my Ghana videos are usually easy like, enjoyable. They're delicious. I'm really looking forward to like when next I go to Ghana. I'm hoping that it's this year. And hey, if you if you're Ghanaian and you want to sponsor your girl to be in Ghana, feel free. Like by all means. <laughs> um, I enjoyed making this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Again, my name is Adeze, and um, I'm trying to grow my channel. So if you aren't already subscribed, please join the family. It would mean a lot. Leave a comment down below, letting me know like what do you think like if you if you found any of my points to be relatable or, or new or weird or i don't know i don't know or just say hello if you don't have anything to say just say hello to me and i'll be sure to reply you with a smile <laughs> um hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed this video that thing helps all right i love you guys and i'll see you in my next one but until then remember that you're an awesome human being if you do say so yourself bye for now